Hi, good evening. Another Wednesday is with us. And hello to all of you in our wonderful gallery audience and those out there in the world of Facebook and Twitch. Hi to you as well. Good to see you all. Right, we have a, an amazing lineup tonight. Absolutely phenomenal. Just looking at that. Oh, well, we will, as you will find out as we go along. So we're going to get straight into the show. Over to uh, um, the USA and to Texas and to the lovely Ravina. Thank you. 
lovely as always. Thank you ever so much for being here. It's terrific. We have a uh, USA centric show tonight. Just about everybody in the performance lineup is from the USA, which uh, ain't a bad thing because there's some fabulous magicians we go on tonight. So from uh, Robin over to a gentleman who I'm absolutely overjoyed to see live. He sent us, uh, or we watched a video of his the other week, and he is now live with us uh, from his studio in the USA, the elusive Leon Cowan. Hi. Once unmuted, it'll be great. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <How's> that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. Sorry about that, gang. I'm excited to be with everybody. Um, I know it's late where you are, but it's only two in the afternoon here in Texas. So, uh, But I'm excited to share something with you tonight that's special. And uh, But before I do, I want to give you a little bit of a background, okay? Right before the pandemic, I mean, right before I retired from my career in industrial construction, and my wife and I, we had planned on making a trip overseas, et cetera. Well, all that got shut down, so I had plenty of time on my hands. And guess what? I caught up on my sleep. <laughs> and in that, I, uh, I noticed I had some dreams that I could remember because I didn't have to rush off to work. And I shared a few of those that were strange and, and funny. And that led to me doing some journaling of dreams. And eventually I wrote an ebook about the dreams I journaled and I shared with people tips on how they could remember their dreams as well. And uh, so one of the methods is as soon as possible, you know, write it down or record it audibly, you know, what you remember of your dream. But the second is to share it verbally with someone else. So that's what I want to do tonight. I had a dream last night and I want to share it with you tonight, but I need somebody to uh, help me out. Can you, can you come up with somebody to help me, Kevin? Microphone working today. So Paul is all excited. Yeah, there we my go. microphone's working. Can you hear Yay. me now? <laughs> Excellent. Well, hello, Paul. Hello, my friend. Hello. <laughs> hey, I'm glad to see me. you here on this show. <laughs> Good. And I can hear you and see you. Yeah, fantastic. I, I'm really excited to have you in particular to help me out. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit later, but this is this is going to be good. I think you're going to enjoy this. Great. Uh, this is this is going to be important to uh, what I'm going to share about our dream. Well, all this is is a is a hotel key card holder. Uh, and it's from an actual hotel that my wife and I stayed in. We went to a wedding in Franklin, Tennessee. And uh, so there is something inside, but uh, we'll share that later, okay? Sure. Uh, yep. You're going to help me recreate my dream and to lock it in. We're going to use uh, these cards. Now, I found these in an antique store. Unfortunately, they taped over it, but it says Flinch Card Company. And there's the cards. They've got the blue backs. But there are a lot of cards in there. I want to show you that they're not our normal playing cards. They have these numbers on them. Two, three, four, five, six. Notice the six has a under, yep. underscore. Notice the line. Yep. Yep. Do that. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So believe it or not, in this box, <laughs> There are 10 <laughs> sets of that. That's 150 cards. And the and the, the instructions are still with this thing. It says for five or more people, use two of these boxes. That's 300 cards. I'm telling <laughs> you, even for magicians, that's a lot to shuffle and to stack properly, right? Wouldn't right. You, you need large hands. So, yeah. <laughs> so we're not going to use all those cards. We're going to use really just uh, one through nine. Okay. So I'm not going to tax your memory too bad. How's that? That's good. We'll get rid of these. Now, Paul, so, I'm going to lay these cards out where you can see them, uh, like so. Are those showing up okay for you? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfectly done. Perfect. Now, the thing I want you to notice is right off the bat, they're in perfect sequential order, right? One yes, they are. True. They're not going to stay that way. Okay. We're going to mix them up. We're going to mix them up. And a better way to say it is you're going to mix them up. Now, oh. if you were here with me, yeah. You could mix them up, but you're not. So I have to be your hands, okay? And honestly, you could trust me to mix up the cards and I would do it. I would do it for real. I'd do it right. Now, if I was one of these other magicians, you know, like Tommy or Kevin or Anthony, 
Yeah, no, 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 no chance, no chance. You can trust me. Okay? Absolutely. All right. Ho, ho. So here's, here's how, we're, so what we're going to do is you're going to tell me how to mix the cards. And this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to spread the cards face down like so. And starting with the top card, I, in a moment, I will be asking you whether we're going to switch, swap, or don't swap, okay? That'll, okay. We'll just say swap or don't swap. And, we, and if you say don't swap, we'll just deal a card down for you. Say, hey, swap, we'll swap these two cards. and then. But let me let me give you an example of how that works, okay? I'll do it face up so you can see what happens. Okay. If you say don't swap, we'll put a card like so. If you say swap, we're going to do it like so. We'll swap those like that. Now, you see how the order changed? Yep, us? they changed position, yep. If you say don't swap, we'll go here. If you say swap, we'll do that right there. Notice again that they're changing, right? Yep, they switch around, yep. If you don't swap is this, and if you swap, we end up with that. So even just one time going through the cards, look, we're already starting to mix the cards, but I can see what's going on and we don't want that. So it's gonna be your turn. Now, let's don't get confused between the six and the nine. That one has an underscore, okay? Yep. All right, so now it's your turn. Okay, let's shall we- Let's go right here. You tell me on this first card, we're gonna swap or no swap? Swap, please. Swap right off the bat. Okay, we'll swap. We'll move these to here. We'll drop those to there. Next, and swap again. Swap again, please. Swap yeah. Again, you like that? Okay. Oh, I go. like that. Yeah, yeah. And again. swap and swap a third time. Yes, please. Swap again. Okay, here we go. Okay, just drop the next one. Just okay. And, yep. two left. and swap the last one. The last pair, then. Yeah. Swap those. Okay. Cool. All right. Now, now that you're warmed up, let's do it again. Here we go. Okay, swap let's no go uh, down, uh, just not, not swap. No swap? Yeah, swap. Swap, here we go. Uh, not swap. Uh, swap. Swap, okay. Swap again. Swap again. Uh -huh. There's one card left, we won't swap. I'll tell you what, just for good measure and for the skeptics out there, mix them up one more time. One more time, okay, let's swap. Swap, okay. Swap again. Swap again. Don't swap. Don't swap. Swap, swap. Yep, swap the next pair. Okay, like so. Yeah, and swap again. Swap again. There we go. Cool. I think we've done a pretty good job, or I should say, you've done a really good job of mixing <laughs> these cards. Now, hopefully, what you have done here will help tie in to my dream. That's what I'm really hoping. Okay, Paul? Yeah. All right. So let me tell you about my dream. Oh, good. I dreamed that I went to that exact same hotel, but this time I was not with my wife. I was by myself, but there were other friends, some old friends that had gathered at the same hotel and they all came to my room and we were all visiting that evening and having a great time. And uh, we were sitting around talking and there were a total of six of us. Six. six. Let's see if you... <laughs> I knew you'd be perfect for this. <laughs> six. There were six of us, six of us. And we talked for a while. And then someone suggested, said, hey, why don't we go get something to eat? And we everybody agreed. So six of us jumped into, I don't know why, dreams are weird, right? We jumped into yeah. four, four different cards, cars. Hmm. <laughs> uh. Four cars. And the strange thing is, is we, we only drove two blocks. We could have walked, but we drove... Two, two blocks. <laughs> when we got to this hotel, when we got to the restaurant, it was really, really busy. And they couldn't seat all six of us at one table. So they split us up onto three tables. Um, That's a three. Excellent. <laughs> you've done an incredible job, Paul. It's crazy. <laughs> but they split us up to three tables, but they only gave us one waiter. One. One. One waiter. There you yeah, and guess is. what? The interesting thing is, you know who the waiter was? Uh, it was oh, it's me. Me. It was you. I was the waiter. Goodness me. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's why I'm so excited when your face came on the screen. I'm like, this is tying together. I'm the waiter. Amazing. All you right. You were the waiter. And you did a great job. Did you I? Took oh. our order, you took our order and we, we, we got stuff to eat and to drink. And so we sat there and visited and we ate and we ate and we ate and we Eight. Eight. <laughs> boom, boom. We, we, we ate 
And, <laughs> and we had a good time for a long while. And then you came up a little while later and you were kind of almost apologetic, but you said, sir, I need somebody to take care of the tab because we close at nine. Uh-huh. Nine. And there's <laughs> nine. Yeah, that was fantastic. And, yeah. and I looked at the ticket, I looked at the bill and I was amazed. I was shocked because as much as we had eaten and drank and all that, it was the bill was only $75. 75, okay. 70. 75. Five. Boom, boom. Excellent. <laughs> you, Paul, you've done an excellent job of helping me reestablish and recall my dream right here. But that's not the end of my dream. No. The cool part, the cool part of the dream is I I thought about it. It was 75 bucks for all we'd eat and drink. And these were good friends I'd had forever. I thought, what the heck? I'll just pay for it myself. I reached for my wallet. Lo and behold, mm. I had left it in the hotel. Right. So the only thing in my pocket was this hotel key card, which had nothing to do with this restaurant. You're two, you were two blocks down. Right. But in the dream, it didn't matter. I pulled it out and I handed it to you. You took this, you opened it up, you looked inside, and you had this huge smile. <laughs> I still remember, huge smile. <laughs> and you said, sir, this is perfect. You handed it back to me. You said, I hope you come again soon. And you walked away. Now, in a dream, that can happen. In real life, you know, they'd have wanted some money. So I, yeah. I looked inside the key card holder, and right. I'll show you what I saw inside. First off, on this side was a advertisement for their restaurant at the hotel I was at. Uh, right. It's called the 1799, which doesn't mean anything. But then there was a coffee shop. But that mm -hmm. was all the hotel. Had nothing to do with your restaurant. Hmm. Had some money over here. On, on this side. But down here, I noticed the room number was a lot longer oh, than typically. Yes. Six, it looks very familiar. Yeah. Would you would you read those numbers very slowly? Yes, sure. Certainly. So it's six, four, two, three, one, eight, nine, seven, five. Exactly the same as your card layout. That's Excellent. incredible. But Excellent. I took a look at the money that you didn't even take. I wasn't sure why. And it was a single bill, uh -huh. a single $5 bill, $5. nothing yep. special that I could tell hmm. it was folded up in there. But when I looked closer, something looked very familiar. Would you do me a favor? Could you read this serial number, please, very slowly? Oh, yeah. So ML 64231897. And we have a card F here with five. And guess what? There's a five, right? Five dollar bill. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> so, Paul, I think that is a dream to remember. Fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I enjoyed being in the dream. <laughs> thank you a dream come true yeah yeah absolutely thanks very much thanks very much Elaine. Uh, right we have another gentleman from the usa uh from texas back to uh, over the other side to Pennsylvania. well sort of up a bit and right a bit to uh, uh to pennsylvania and uh, a gentleman who's been sending us videos for the last couple of months because he's always been working but tonight he's free and with us live and in person hi love to see you it's Patrick. Come on in. All right. Hello, everybody. How we doing? It's it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Finally, live in person. I was able to kind of sneak away from work this week and then join you fine folks. Uh, let's let's do uh, let's do something. Let's do a card a trick. I can tell you're excited already. Uh, but it's not a very usual card trick because I'm not a usual person. Uh, we're going to do something different, and I need somebody to help me out with this card trick. So let's see. I get a volunteer. Uh, if I get maybe Kevin or uh, uh, one of the guys to pick me out a volunteer. I don't know how you guys usually do it on this show. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Stick your hands up if you want to help us, Patrick. Yeah. Oh, there, Bill. Bill. Bill and Mitch. There you go. Cool. All right, we got Bill there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, Bill, how are you? Go ahead, take yourself off mute there and join the party. Party. 
party. All right. <laughs> Excellent. So, Bill, um, I'm, I'm glad that you're uh, going to help me out with this card of trick uh, because uh, this is no ordinary deck of playing cards. This deck of playing cards, Bill, was given to me by my great-grandmother, who was a magician's assistant for many, many, many years. She was the first person to teach me all about magic and how it works, and she was the first person to show me a deck of marked playing cards. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a deck of marked cards before, uh, but uh, a long time ago, gamblers and cheats would actually put little secret markings on the backs of the cards so that they could read what you had in your hand by looking at the backs of the cards from across the table. That way they could cheat at poker or whatever card game they were playing and uh, win, win all your money by using uh, a marked deck. Now this is my great grandmother's marked deck of playing cards. And I wanna show you these cards. So let me open them up and take them out of the box. Let me show them to you. There they are, just like that. Now, with the lighting here uh, on my end of the stage, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see the markings on the backs, but I guarantee they are there. 11, 36, 17, 15, 34. There you go. Actually, <laughs> my grandmother tended to write a little bit bigger than maybe she should have, but uh, uh, these cards are actually marked from uh, 1 to 52 uh, for the 52 cards in the pack. So all the numbers are there from 1 to 52. They're all shuffled and mixed up, as you can see, but they are all, uh, they are all in there. So uh, I'd like to use this deck of uh, marked playing cards and your imagination, Bill, to hopefully do something that I think is cool, and hopefully you will too. Uh, so in a moment, I'm going to ask you uh, to select uh, a number, actually two numbers, because we're going to do we're going to do two different cards here. And uh, so this is where the imagination part comes in, right here, Bill. I want you to imagine that in my hand is an imaginary invisible playing card. It is the nine of diamonds. Can you see it? Yes. Very good, he's using his imagination already. I like that. Now, on the back of the nine of diamonds is one of my great grandmother's numbers, secret numbers. Now, it's up to you to take a guess as to what number is on the back of the nine of diamonds. but. Since this is your first time doing this, I, I'm going to give you a, a little hint, or actually a couple of hints to kind of help you make your decision, okay? So the Nine of Diamonds is right here. The number that's on the back of the Nine of Diamonds, I will tell you it is an odd number, and it's it's kind of on the low end, like below 25. But that's all the help I'm going to give you, Bill. It's up to you. Take a guess, Nine of Diamonds, what number do you think is on the back? 20. Okay, remember it's an odd number, Bill. Okay. <laughs> Bill's paying 21. attention. I know he is. <laughs> What's up? 21. Okay, 21. All right. So we're going to write that down. We're going to write that down. Nine of diamonds and the number 21. Okay, very good. All right. So now it's going to get a little bit harder, Bill, because this time I want to show you in this hand, I have another imaginary invisible playing card. This card right here is the uh, four of clubs. Four of clubs right here. Now, Bill, on the back of the four of clubs is one of my great-grandmother's secret marked numbers. I will give you another hint. The number on the back is an even number this time. Okay, it's an even number, and it's kind of on the high end, like above 26. So 26, 52, some even number somewhere in the middle. That's all the help I'm going to give you, Bill. So four clubs on the front. What number do you think is on the back? Take a guess. 50. 50. All right. We will write that down. So the four clubs and the number 50. All right. I lied a little bit. We're actually going to do one more card. <laughs> This one is going to be a little bit different because this one is the hardest one of all. So this time, I'm actually going to show you the back of this imaginary playing card. Now, on the back of this card, obviously, is a number. Now, this number, Bill, is a 37. It's a 37, Bill. Now, it's up to you 
to tell us what playing card is on the front of the 37. Now remember, you can't use the Nine of Diamonds. We've already used that one. You can't choose the Four of Clubs. That one's already spoken for. There are 50 more cards in the pack. Uh, I did throw out the Jokers, so those aren't in there. But there are 50 more cards in the pack. So, Bill, the 37 is on the back. Think about it. What playing card do you think is on the front of the 37? Three of Clubs. Okay, the Three of Clubs. So we will write that down. The number 37, Three of Clubs. Bill, it's now time to see how well you used your imagination. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the cards, turn them over, and we're going to search for the Three of Clubs. There it is right there. We'll take the cards and turn them face down. I'm going to look for the number 21. Let's see here. 21. I know it's in here. Uh, yep, there it is. The number 21. And then the number 50. The number 50. All right. I think we have to go down a little farther in the pack. There's 30, uh, 42, 19, 7, 52, 45. There we go. All right. Very good. So, Bill, here's the situation. We've got the number 50, we've got the number 21, and we've got the three of clubs. Now, earlier, I asked you to imagine an invisible imaginary playing card, the nine of diamonds. Now, you said that on the back of the nine of diamonds was a 21. Well, this is a 21. But more importantly, that is the Nine of Diamonds. <laughs> now, I asked you also to imagine a Four of Clubs. The Four of Clubs right here. You said that the Four of Clubs on the back, there was a number. It was the number 50. This is a 50. But, Bill, more importantly, on the front is the Four of Clubs. Not too shabby. Two out of two. But now comes the hardest job of all. I just casually mentioned the back of an imaginary playing card and said that that number was number 37. 37. You had to think about it for a little bit, and you said the number, the card, on the front of the 37 was the three of clubs. Now, I don't know if it was because of the four of clubs or not. I don't know. I don't pretend to get into the middle of your mind, Bill, but the three of clubs, I know it's true. The three of clubs right here is the card that you chose. But the weirdest part is, is that on the back of the three of clubs is the number 37, Bill. And that is my great grandmother's deck of Mark playing cards. Thank you so much, guys. Do me a favor and give Bill a huge round of applause for helping out. A fantastic job. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Bill, for doing, doing a fantastic job there. Guys, I've got time for just one more thing. One more quick thing. I wanted to show you something really cool. Um, uh, Father's Day just came by. Uh, it was back in June, uh, so it wasn't that long ago. But, but I love Father's Day. I love when Father's Day comes around because of my family. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Let me pop back on there. One of the switch cameras. And, uh, and every Father's Day, uh, I think for the last 12 or 13 years, uh, my family has actually gotten me a really cool gift. And that gift is a pair of wacky, wonky, crazy colored socks. Now, I have to explain a little bit. <laughs> About 12 or 13 years ago, they gave me a pair of wacky socks uh, as, a, as a, a gag gift, so to speak. You know, just something funny. But ever since then, it's turned into an annual Father's Day tradition. They actually give me a pair of socks. They give me other stuff too, but it's the socks that I love the most because I, it shows that they love me. Uh, and it's kind of cool. As a matter of fact, I wanted to share with you guys all of the socks that I've gotten over the last 12 or 13 years, but bringing a bunch of socks and dumping them here on my desk to show you, I thought might be a bit rude. So I decided to do something a little bit different. Let me show you. I took the socks, I took pictures of them, and I laminated them on these cards. So, I've got a pack right here. Let me take them out. We'll place them there. 
and I got a pack right over here and we'll place them there now these socks are well you'll see because every time I do the laundry let me show you what happens <laughs> the socks always get mixed up and they are really cool funky colored socks but as you can see they're all mixed that's what happens when I do the laundry they are cool like that one's a diamond colored ones that one's a little bubble hexagon ones uh, I like that one that one's a cool pattern I don't even know what those are uh, silver rings with a gold uh, polka dots yellow red black I uh, love that one there. That one's kind of dull. It's just colored red, but what are you going to do? Stars on that one, the blue sock. I like that one. That one's actually pretty cool. So there's a ton of these really cool uh, socks. So, Bill, you're still hanging out with me, so that's good. Let's let's uh, let's choose let's choose uh, some socks uh, uh, randomly. I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. So uh, we've got the socks here. We're going to turn the socks over. I'm going to turn the top one over like this. And uh, I'm just going to, when I say go, I'm just going to flip over socks from face down to face up until you say stop. And then when you say stop, we'll go through and we'll find the next face down sock and we'll put it down here. We'll leave it face down to keep an air of mystery about it. Okay? So, I say go, you'll say stop. Go. Stop. Okay. We take the cards and we go through. And we find the first space down sock, and we'll place that one right there. All right. And we're going to do the same thing to this pile right over here. So let me bring that one back. Very good. We'll hold on to that. And I'll say go, and I'll start turning socks up until you say to stop. And go. Stop. Okay, right there. We'll go down to the face down sock right there. Awesome. And we'll lay it right there. Now, Bill, here's the weird part. You could have chosen any of these socks, any of these socks, but you didn't. You actually chose this one here and this one here. Let's see what you've chosen. I'm curious. Ah, cool. That one, a purple sock, a purple sock with white stars and a yellow, yellow toe there, right there. Awesome. Pretty cool. Let's see this one over here. This one is... Oh, awesome. It's a yellow sock, a uh, black toe there. Look, Oh, it's got green stripes, and I think those are little stars right in there. Green stripe, stars, yellow sock, black one. This one over here, purple one, uh, white stars with a yellow toe. That's pretty cool. It's actually more cool than you know, Bill. <laughs> I don't know how you did it. I don't know why. I don't know how, but these two socks right here, I, I know they don't match. And sometimes I'm kind of a wacky guy, so I like to wear mismatched socks. Th this right here, this is my favorite pair of socks. I, I love these. Out of all the socks I have, these two, my favorite pair of socks. As a matter of fact, I wear my favorite pair of socks to every important occasion. A and the Open Mic Magic Show is as important as it gets. So, so let me show you. Let me show you. I'm actually wearing those socks right now. So let me show you. See this one here on my left foot? That's the purple one right there with the white stars. Check it out, check it out, check it out. And this one here on my right foot, that's the yellow one there with the green stripes right over there. Yellow one, green stripes, purple one with the stars, just like that. And as I shove my feet into the camera, just like that, you can actually see <laughs> it's really, really cool. My favorite pair of socks. But, Bill, the weirdest part of this whole thing, the weirdest part of this whole thing is that yesterday my wife did the laundry. I didn't do the laundry this time. My wife did the laundry. And when she does the laundry, well, things have a happen of, working out right. See, when she did the laundry, well, she matched up that pair of socks. And she matched up that pair. And she matched that pair. That pair. That one. That one. Those. 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 And those as well. Now we know who should do laundry.
Absolutely. <laughs> and it's not me. <laughs> guys, thank you so much. Thank you once again, Bill, for an outstanding job. You guys are awesome. It was a pleasure hanging out with you live this week. Thank you so much. Now it's time to turn it back over to our host. <laughs> Thanks, Ed Patrick, uh, there from Pennsylvania. And great to see you live. Fantastic. And promise that you'll be back live with us another week as well to sneak out of work just to be with us. Okay, so right from live to video, uh, we have, uh, and back to Texas, we have a, uh, a magician who is profoundly deaf and does fabulous magic and is an ambassador for, for deaf magic as well. So I'm going to pass you over to the wonderful David Pierce. And I forgot to say, very funny as well. Thank you, David. <laughs>
Right, okay. Um, Stu, could you bring up Anthony Dockstone next to me on one side or the other? Uh, now, Anthony knew that we were playing a video in of him performing, but what he didn't know is that we were going to do a little little celebration for his 175th birthday, which is just uh, <laughs> occurring. Uh, Anthony has been with us so long, we actually don't remember when, when he wasn't here. Uh, hi, Anthony. Good to see you. Good to see you, uh, Kevin. The, uh, <laughs> you are the head honcho in charge of the uh, Society of American Magicians International Assembly. And, uh, <clears throat> but also, people don't know some of the little things about you, like your esoteric interests, uh, your interest in philosophy, and your sense of mischief. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony. Yes. Well, do you want me to say something about that? Yeah, yeah, go oh, ahead. Well, yeah, just a little bit. Okay, absolutely. I, I, did, I, did, I did mark this down for, for three to five minutes, not seven hours. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Yeah, I have been known to do that, yes, <laughs> occasionally. Well, basically, yes, I'm, I'm very honored to be the president of the um, SAM International Assembly, and of which you are a member, and there's quite a few folks here <coughs> also. Uh, members that came about by a chance conversation when I was a house guest of the dean of all the SAM, George Schindler, up in Brooklyn in New York in his home. And we got talking, and then from that, something else happened. And then uh, it sort of laid dormant, and then somebody else picked it up. And before we knew it, there it was. And we're coming on for about three years now uh, with the assembly. And we have people in, well, one of them's here, this is Iceland, uh, oh, China, Singapore, Malta, France, uh, you know, kind of like pick a country and somebody everywhere. And we have now three envoys in England, of which I'm delighted to say that okay. you very kindly are one of them. Yep. Indeed, yes, yes. So just, uh, I know you're, 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 you're a fun guy as well. And, uh, and you, you love this, this mischief side of your, 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 your personality. Just let us into a little bit of that before we show the video. Yeah, you're right. <coughs> you're right, Kevin. I'm a mushroom. <laughs> yes. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> Some of you will get that. <laughs> yes, I've always, I've always loved mischief, um, and I think it's. You, you mentioned about being a philosopher, and I suppose it's a very kind word to use. I do have a love for the esoteric and for sorcery, and a lot of my performing characters uh, have that element. And those of you like you and Michael Kelly and a few other folks who know me well. Um, no, I absolutely revel in that kind of thing. And in a way, I bring it over to some of the performances for the characters. Mischief, yes. Um, but good, clean mischief. Not the bucket of water over a door when someone's walking through. I, I don't consider that good mischief. Good mischief, um, probably on a nice hot summer's day, hiding behind a bale of hay or somewhere else and you know, a water pistol in your hand and you're just squirting somebody or something like that, you know, sil silly stuff, because I happen to believe that in order to preserve your sanity, no matter what your age, you need to be a little silly at times. Um, Indeed. So that's the mischief part, if you like. Yeah. <laughs> and as you know, we you thought you were going to see a video of yourself performing because we've been honored you to have a video of yourself performing. Yes. But Instead of that, what has uh, happened? I'm going to just leave you up for a second, and then when the video started, leave Anthony there for a second or two, and then Stu, and then let's go full screen on the video. Uh, we have a very good friend of yours, uh, Dr. Michael Like You have noticed it in the gallery as well. But ah. He uh, <laughs> actually added an introduction to the video. So uh, here we go. Dr. Michael Likey here. And from the first vice president to the president of our International Assembly of the Society of American Magicians, I want to wish you, Anthony Darkstone, a very happy and healthy birthday. Cheers. I wonder if he'll remember my birthday is coming up. <laughs> Of course he will. He always wishes many here a happy birthday.
Meanwhile, here are some of his performing characters you may not be familiar with. Yay! Thank you, Anthony, and happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> right, well, we are staying in, in the USA to a, another gentleman who occasionally comes in and sees us and sometimes he's on video. Uh, and he's, uh, I believe, off to Canada at the moment to, to FISM and uh, has asked, I said, I said to him, can we show one of his videos? And he said, choose any one you like. Uh, this is one that Tommy actually showed on his Tuesday night show a couple of weeks ago, and I think it's just an absolutely fantastic uh, illusion. So over to the terrific Anthony Fisher. Folks, let me tell you just a little bit about myself. I uh, got my interest in magic when I was about six years old. My, my huh? Oh, already? Oh. Looks like our time is up for this evening. Back my daughter, Claire, I want to thank you for being such a wonderful audience and for being so gracious to us this evening. And, well, I guess the only thing left for me to do is uh, pack everything up in the boxes. And I do mean everything. <laughs>
of feathers as always. I love that illusion. That is just great. So hopefully we will see Alan back in a couple of weeks' time when he's uh, come back from his travels. Okay, now back to live magic and staying in the USA over to California and my great friend and fantastic magician, Magic Mitch. Hi there, Mitch. Hello. Hey, everybody. Good to be here again. Uh, update. I uh, think I mentioned this last week. I had COVID. And don't worry, before y'all panic, I'm okay. Zero symptoms, tested negative Saturday, so I can go back outside. What a great feeling the freedom is. So uh, during the time I had COVID, it sucked. I had to stay inside and, uh, well, create some routines. So I looked through my old routines and found a great one to share with all of you. Uh, so I need a volunteer to help me, someone to come up. Let me look through the audience. And uh, I used... Anthony, last week, uh, it was your birthday. Let's choose someone new. Uh, Isabel. Isabel Steven, I, I, I see you in the audience. Can we get her spot? Hello. Uh, yes, hello. Yeah, <coughs> nice to meet you, Isabel, right? Nice to meet you too, right. yes. Nice, nice to meet you. You have a very colorful, bubbly personality. This is perfect. <laughs> you're going to be perfect for this. Uh, so what you're going to see isn't uh, mine. It's just a rendition of one of my favorite magicians. Um, for anonymity and just for uh, secrecy, uh, I'll use his initials, JJ, okay? You don't know who JJ is, but he is my favorite magician of all time. And if you are a magician, um, here's a quick side note. He just released something. Uh, you can pick it up at Vanishing Inc. And it is an amazing uh, book that he just released. So um, I encourage all of you to go explore it. But this is one of his effects, and um, it's one of my favorite routines of all time. You want to see it? Absolutely. All right, great. So uh, this is uh, how magicians first learn how to, uh, you know, uh, handle cards. They pick uh, a deck of cards they want to use. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use, uh, it's called Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Phoenix, the fiery bird. It's inside all of us. Okay. So uh, Phoenix back, okay? And I'm just going to set the box down right here. Now, uh, we need to take out, before we do this trick, uh, some jokers. So I'm going to go through. And I'm just going to eliminate, da -da, here they are, the uh, the two uh, jokers right here. These are the Phoenix jokers. I think they're pretty cool, though. What do you think? They are. Love They are. They're Phoenix. fiery and they're flamey. All mm -hmm. right. Just like you, Isabel, you're going to help me out, okay? I'm yes. going to show you one of the very first effects that uh, <clears throat> I learned. Uh, most magicians probably have learned it as well. Um, it's a very famous card trick, okay? And it teaches you three things. Misdirection, sleight of hand and most of all, magic. So Ooh. if you were here, you would be able to help me. Uh, it's very simple. All you gotta do is this. Do this with your finger, and then do this. Up, down, up, and down. Very good, so that's just a warm up for your thumb. All right, so I would, I, I'll give you a card. This is the Ace of Diamonds. So you would pretend to do this with your thumb, so you would actually pretend to clamp it with your thumb. So if I pretend to give that to you, right? I'll just set it here on the table, pretending that's your thumb. Now, if you don't, uh, if you don't trust me, you uh, you could turn it over. But what card is this? What card is this? It's the Ace of Spades. I assume it's the Ace of oh, not Spades. Sorry. Um, what is it. diamonds in <laughs> Diamond. Yeah, that's right. And if you don't trust me, you can look. And generally, sorry. most people don't trust me. So they, there you go. The Ace of Diamonds. Right. <laughs> All right. So for the other card, this is the con uh, the uh, the mate, so to speak. This is the uh, Ace of Hearts. And the Ace of Heart is very simple. All I'm going to do is take the Ace of Heart, put it not here, but here, underneath. Yes. And I switch the card. Now, a very simple question, Isabel, uh, for, let's say, for um, um, misdirection. If you would say, I took the Ace of Diamonds, what card would you assume is right here on the table? What would you say? The Ace of Hearts. The Ace of Hearts. And I have the... Ace of Diamond, but, Good. but maybe if not anymore. It, if I put it not here, but here on top, yes. What's what is on the bottom? The Ace of Diamonds or the Ace of Hearts? It should be the Ace of Hearts. You know, I I, I feel bad. This whole misdirection, sleight of hand magic. It's just hard from the memory. Let's let's just begin all over again. Let me take out the jokers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I forgot to eliminate those, so I just, sorry. I got to remove those. Um, let's try to let's try to switch it up. I'm gonna try to make for you uh, the four aces appear. How about that? Pretty cool Great. trick. 
Okay, great. Here's the first one. It relies on misdirection. Did you see that? No. No, because you saw me snap over here, but you didn't look <laughs> over here. And when you looked over here, there's a card. See? Now look. If I take it, oh, not an ace. It's not an ace. Darn it. Um, I, I got an idea. I'll take the card. Let's say the uh, the ace. I would have you just just hold on to it. So you would you would just hold on to that. If I low on it, hopefully the seven that was here will now change. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. There is the ace of heart, the, the love card. All right. I'm going to put it in the middle or down towards the bottom of the deck. I'm going to try to get another ace for you. Ready? Yes. Ah, uh, you looked up here. You didn't look down here where there was a card. <laughs> Come on, that was even on camera too. That was pretty good. So I have the other ace right down here, the ace of diamonds. Oh, diamonds. And I want you to watch very carefully, Isabel. I'm going to put the ace of diamonds in the bottom of the deck. Are you watching the deck? Yes. Snap my fingers. And all I have to do is compress, 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 compress. Whoa, where did the deck go? See, you you didn't look underneath the, the, the card box. That was always there the whole yeah, time. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, stay, stay here. Thank, thank you for helping me. You're still up though. Can you still help me? Uh, still stick course. around? Uh, because I, I, I appreciate you helping me and I, I, I love the fact that you're just here um, uh, participating. So like I said, you have a very bubbly personality. It's just who you are. So I'm going to uh, make the four aces appear excuse me, all at one time. How about that? All right. Great. There we go. Just for you. Here we go. I'm going to do this just for you. Square up the deck and I'm going to cut it one time. When I cut it one time, hopefully I will find the four aces. So to do this, I'm just going to take the top card. Uh, let's say about, about right here. Okay. About right here where I cut. Sound good? But when I cut to that, I cut to one ace. Mm. Look. The top card, I cut to another ace. Look, right here, I cut to. Eh? Oh, oh, no, it's back. This was, this was a this was an unexpected thing, but I did find another ace. Darn it, where did that? You know what? I'm sorry. I, I think I know what the problem is. See, the problem is, uh, Isabel, is that you can see the seven, but you have to use magic. And pretty soon it starts to kind of and look. Yes. Now we got the Ace of Spades. Now we got it. See, everything <laughs> eventually just, uh, so to speak, just comes together, right? It just comes together uh, in the end. Uh, so I'm going to do one last thing for you. I'm going to gather up these aces. And I can tell that you have been pretty observant up to this point. I mean, you understand uh, more or less how cards work. If you were here, you were, you know, going to help me. I'm going to set the four uh, aces right here next to me onto the table. And I need you to do one last thing for me, okay? One last thing. I need you to tell me uh, what your favorite color is. Let's do that. What is your black. favorite color? Black. What is it? Black. Black? black. Yes. Like this black. Like this yeah, black this right black. Here. Yeah. All right, all right. Let me see if I can get... Yep, I got black. Watch. Mm. I, got, I got this. You see the deck, yes? See the deck? Hopefully, hopefully this will change to a wide spectrum of oh. colors. That's cool. That's it really is. cool. The aces just changed into, what was it, yellow, red. We could have named any color. But you said black, didn't you? <laughs> and I've been using this deck the whole time. Why mm -hmm. I called on you, Isabel, is because you were fantastic for helping me. I really appreciate that. Your personality is awesome. I did mention you have a very colorful personality, right? Uh -huh. So why don't we just get that with the entire deck? Oh. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. All different. All That's different. Awesome. Green, red, black, blue. You name it. I got it. Here it is. You can inspect all of this if you want. And the real cool thing, Isabel, for helping me out, you helped me find the aces. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and make those. A little bit more colorful too by changing those oh, well fantastic. all right and is that is my routine give it up for isabel everybody she's been fantastic thank you, thank so, you much. so much Kevin. you're awesome kevin thank you fantastic thank you mitch uh what's uh, 
some of the non-magicians out there won't realise is how difficult it is to do that sort of magic over Zoom when the camera is just focused directly on your hands and the desktop all the time. So bravo, Mitch. Absolutely fabulous. Right. Now, coming up to a virtual stage is a brand new performer. Well, not, not a brand new performer, but he's a new performer to us. He hasn't been with us before. And we'd like to welcome a big round of applause for uh, Kelvin Chubb. Come on board, Kelvin. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then show us what you've got. Aloha. I'm in Honolulu, Hawaii, and I'm a retired educator, kite flyer, and magician. I've been retired for eight years now, and so now I travel the world. In fact, I'm going to go to FISM in a few weeks, but before that, in April, May, I already visited Canada where I drove 66 hours on the East Coast. I drove from Quebec to New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, flew down to Toronto, Niagara Falls, and watched a great fluence uh, bird uh, magic show. And then I travel all over the world. So let me show you my photos that I've been taking. See, these are some of the photos over here that I've been traveling around. Now for this magic, all of you can participate. Here I have six photos of me doing a magic performance and six photos of me traveling in different nature destinations. For example, here's Everest Base Camp. This one is the Hope well rocked in the New Brunswick. This one is Mont Blanc. And that's the hike through Italy, France, and Switzerland. And here, this one is on Prince Edward Island. This is Norway. This is the Keurig Bolton. And here's another one in Canada, Nova Scotia, the Balancing Rock. So I want all of you to participate. The first thing we're going to do is any of you choose a nature scenery from these photos. So you can either choose this one, Everest, this one, choose any of the nature scenery, okay? And then from there, let's say, let's say you chose this one. From there, you go left or right to the nearest magician. So if I chose this, I go here. If I chose this, I go here. If I chose this one, the nearest magician is over here. Okay? So all of you should be on a magician now. So let's say I'm over here. Then you go up or down to the nearest nature scenery. So if I was here, I go to the nearest nature scenery. If I was here, up or down to the nearest nature, you go over here. Or if I was here, you go to the nearest uh, nature scenery, okay? So let's say now I'm over here. From where you are on a nature scenery, you go diagonally to the nearest magician. So let's say if I'm here, I go either here or here. So you go diagonally to the nearest magician from the nature scene, okay? Then you go left or right to the nearest nature scenery. So if I was here, the nearest left or right is this one. If I was here, nearest is this one, nature scenery, okay? Now all of you by chance should have all landed on the same nature scenery, which is me standing next to the balancing rock. So all of you should be on this nature scenery. Is that the same for all of you? Yep, I can okay. see everybody in the gallery is agreeing. Yep, yep. Good. Perfect. Good. fabulous. Now let's continue on. Let's travel the world. Here I have, <laughs> 12 photos of me all around the world. This is Newfoundland. This is Japan, Hokkaido. 
Here's China, Honolulu, Korea, Canada, Japan, Korea, China, Thailand, Honolulu, Thailand. All different sceneries. Okay, now I'm gonna turn over these photos. I numbered it one, two, three, four, five, six, and this one is seven, eight, and this one is number nine, number 10, number 11, and number 12. All of you can see all the numbers, one through 12. Yep. Okay, good. Now, all of you, you're gonna think of any of these number, one through 12. Everybody gonna have, might have different numbers. So if you think of one or three or nine, everybody think of a number, okay? You got that number in your mind? Okay, now you're gonna spell out your number starting with the first photo. So if you chose the number six, you're gonna spell S-I-X. If you chose the number 12, you're gonna spell T-W-E-L-V-E, -E, okay? Or if you chose the number eight, you're gonna spell E-I-G-H-T, okay? Everybody choose your number. And then uh, Kevin, let's say yep. we, we have you as an example to choose a number, but the others might be different. Kevin, okay, choose so a number. You want Kevin, me to actually nominate my number? You can tell me the number. What number is it? Nine. Nine? Okay, we're gonna spell out N-I-N-E. Yeah. You're over here. Some others might be different. They might be on, if they were one, O-N-E, but Kevin is over here. Now, he's gonna spell this number that my finger is on. Everybody else gonna spell your number that your finger is on. So if you were on three, you spelled T-H-R-E-E, -E, but Kevin's gonna spell Four. Okay, ready, yep. Kevin? We're gonna yep. spell four. Yep. F F O, -O, -O U R. He's over here. Everybody yep. else might be on a different number. If they spell three from the last one, they spell T H R E E. If they spell another number, you spell it out. Okay, now Kevin, you're on this number. Everybody yep. else might be on a different number. Spell this number out. E E I I G G H H T and then go back to T. We go back to the first row. Okay, yeah. he's on this one. <clears throat> others might be on some other number, but I know the others. They're not on the number two, which was in Japan. They're not on the number four, which was in Honolulu, and they're not on the number eight which was me in Honolulu, or they're not on the number 12, which was in Japan. Everybody else is on a number. Kevin, you're on a number. Yep. Spell out your number. O-N-E. O-N-E, so you're on yep. this number. Yep. Okay, so everybody else, I know they're not on the number three, or the number 10, okay? So everybody, Kevin, this is the yep. number you chose. Six. You're on <laughs> the balancing rock with me. And just so happened, everybody, I'm wearing the same shirt. Yep. Yeah, we got a, a consensus that everybody's on it. Okay, thank you. Thank you ever so in. much. Thanks, Kelvin. And, and uh, if they're going to FISM, I'll see you in FISM. Um, and then I have a uh, luncheon to go to now. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll be seeing all of you. And it's Fabulous. getting close to lunch. So it was nice performing. Aloha. Thank you, Kelvin. Thank you. Aloha. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.
Right. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Kelvin. Well, hopefully, we'll see you again, Kelvin, as well another time. Yeah. Keep Thank keep you. staying with us. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Um, we've got another short video from uh, our friend down in Florida, Richie Nash, who uh, fires little videos to me every now and again, which is always great fun. Uh, it's only a couple of minutes long. So over to Richie. Crazy. Thank you. Thank you, Richie. Great stuff, as always. Okay, so um, a few people might have noticed the little dots there. That, that's, yeah, I know, very annoying, isn't it? It's, uh, I've got a new camera, and the lighting position is just slightly off. I'll be working on that. So if I look up slightly, it reflects the, the spotlights and, the, and everything in my glasses. So live with it, folks, for now. So I'll sort it out. Okay, so where are we on the running order? Oh, wow, yes, so we're back in the UK and uh, not on the mainland. We're moving over to the Isle of Man to our wonderful, mysterious, mystery, all, all sorts of weird magic man, Michael Kelly. Come in, Michael. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I'd like a volunteer, please, if I could, just to help me with sorting a few little things. Hi, Paul. Hi. Is my microphone still OK? All's well, yeah. Brilliant. It's, it's quite simple, Paul. Um, I've got eight envelopes here. And yes. I just want you to choose four of them. All of the choices will be yours. You're going to choose four, and the other four you're going to give to me. But I'm not going to make any of the decisions. So we'll start out. Here's the first two. Would you like the top or the bottom? Uh, let me have the bottom one, please, Michael. You'll take the bottom. I will put that back to the bottom of the pile. If you'd like to choose another, top or bottom. I'll go for the bottom again, please, Michael. The bottom again. Yeah. And you better choose one for this side now. Are you going to give me the top or the bottom? I'll give you the bottom this time. I'll have the bottom. I'm sensing a pattern here. <laughs> Once again, for me, top or bottom? I'll give you the top one this time, Michael. Oh, a pattern that's now broken. <laughs> okay, that's half of them done, and we've got two each. And you've made all the choices. Let's choose another one for you, Paul. Would you like uh, the top I'll, I'll take the top one this time. Top You're taking ones. the top one there. Yes, please. Okay, and uh, I'll have another one. Would you like me to have the top or the bottom? Uh, I'll give you the top as well, Michael. I'll have the top, okay. And that just leaves the final two. Top or bottom, Bob? Um, bottom, please. The bottom, no problem at all. You're giving them to me, I'll take that. And that leaves one left, the top. 
I've got four, you've got three, so that's yours. Great. All right. So let's see what this is all about. Well, some of you know my interest in the fairy folk, the fae, the hidden people themselves, the gentry, the good neighbours, call them what title you will. And I thought I would like to uh, bestow a little blessing upon everybody tonight. I thought it would be a good thing to do. And I thought I would use these wonderful fey playing cards to do it. But um, they're quite wonderful things. I mean, they've got all of the Celtic knot work on them, but also the court cards are very nice. They're wonderfully illustrated with uh, fey creatures. The thing is, though, talking of court cards, there are two fairy courts, not one. <clears throat> there is the Seely Court and the Seely Fairy Court are those which are, if not benevolent to humans, they're at least on reasonable terms and you might expect a blessing from them but there's also the unseely court and these are the fey folk who are definitely not enamored of the human species they can be downright hostile or mischievous at best now the, these two they're not separate factions they're two different faces of the same power and this is the risk we run when we try to obtain a blessing from the Fey folk. They have more than one face. And that's why, Paul, I, I wanted you to make all of the decisions so that if you choose the Unseely Court, it's entirely your fault. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but let's see what you've chosen. Now, in this deck of cards, the red suits are the Seely Court and the black suits are the Unseely Court. And these eight envelopes contain the kings and queens of the two courts. So you chose this one. chose this one, I chose this one, and you chose this one. And these envelopes are all quite empty now. And you chose the kings and queens of the Seely Court, all four of them. Here we have King Oberon and Queen Titania, the Lady of Elfheim. We have the King of the Brownies and the Queen of the Pixies. You couldn't have chosen better if you tried, Paul. Whereas I am left with these four. The court of the Unseely. King Eriking, the Queen of the Kachi, Queen Marv, and the Goblin King. 
So thank you, Paul. You've bestowed a wonderful fairy blessing upon everybody through your choice, because we have to have the element of chance. For me, it's a good job. I have an understanding with these people and am not averse to the forces of mischief. Thank you very much for your help, Paul. And back to you, Kevin. Hey. Thank you, Michael. Fantastic, as always, Michael. Terrific stuff. Wonderful. Okay, so uh, we're coming towards the end of the show. We've got two more uh, people to uh, to invite on the stage. Well, one more plus three. Uh, over to uh, New York City and the man who knows almost everything or far too much. And anyway, he's just a great guy <laughs> and a fantastic magician. Tommy Burnett. Hello, Tommy. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Michael. It was great. Thank you for putting me on way after Michael. I really appreciate that. Uh, hey, my <laughs> pleasure, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I figured it works. I figured it works. Well, um, as some of you may remember, last week I uh, began a tale about a young lady who had a, a miserable life, and um, I called the second part last night on my show. I'm going to finish with part three tonight of, um, let me, sorry, sorry, I had to queue up, uh, of the uh, curious case of Annabelle Dewey. And for those of you who either weren't there um, last week or last night, Annabelle was a young woman in the 1800s who, uh, this is her, as a child. Uh, her parents were brutally murdered. And uh, even though she was way too young, um, Instead of uh, putting her in jail, even though there was no proof, they locked her away in a psychiatric hospital and um, did horrible things to her. Um, I'm looking for her father, but as an adult, but I guess I don't have it here. Um, oh, wait a minute, here it is, right behind you. Um, so, Around 30 years later, she um, ended up taking her own life. And um, before, before she took her life, she wrote a letter, which I will read part of to you later. Uh, but what interested me in this whole thing from the very beginning was um, the note as she wrote on the day of her death, was written exactly a hundred years before I was born on my birthday. And that really struck a point with me. So I did, I did my research and found out that um, a lot of weird stuff happened. Um, around this. And today, we're going to um, uh, call on the lovely Isabel, because she helped me last night. I'm going to bring her up here now. Um, when, when somebody pays attention. Can we have Isabel up here, please? At any point, can we have Isabel? <laughs> Yay! Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. That's the problem with doing a long exposition at the beginning because people fall asleep. So, uh, <laughs> um, as, you, as you will remember, last night I showed you a picture of 
the psychiatric center up yes. in Jefferson, New York. And I refer to a window who you can barely see over here, but yes. it's there, right? Not this one, but the one right here, yeah? And um, can I tell you the same window from the inside? And I told you that around the outside of this window are uh, little tiny windows yes. that look a little bit like this. Yep. Yep. Um, now, I, I this probably took me a couple of years to actually find all of this stuff and and be able to make some sort of sense out of this. Um, but I actually found one of these uh, plates. The uh, hospital burned down in 1972. Wow. And I, I found this uh, a steel window. It, it is still scorched from the fire. Part of the way. Part of the window, actually, the glass melted. I don't know if you can see up in that corner, but um, the, gla the glass actually melted. Um, oh. And yeah, um, I normally don't buy all the fast like this, but uh, I was so interested in this. Um, this may be the most expensive um, artifact I've ever acquired. Um, but anyway, um, we'll start reading part of the letter to you. Okay. Uh, it's rather long, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says, um, June 12, 1861, to the world, I wish to say goodbye. I am not fit to continue here with you all. I am convinced that I am deserving of death. I can no longer live with my despair. They say I killed my parents, but I don't remember anything. Day after day, year after year, I try to recall that horrible day. The police said there was no other evidence besides me being drenched in my parents' blood, and the doctors called it psychosis. I was only a frightened little girl. They locked me up in this hell as a child, defenseless, and they treated me with electric shocks. I am so ugly now. They are responsible for making me the monster that I have become. Now I will take my revenge, mm. and once done, this hell will go up in flames. Uh, and then I will jump off a cliff with the help from the devil himself. I will place my soul into my favorite doll, which I told you the other day. And, um, because that was my, always my favorite one. Now, I have them confined. These are not the actual, actual cards. These are photocopies of cards that she used to carry around and, and pull, right? There was a star. There was a square, there was a plus sign, there was a circle, and there was a wavy line, right? Yeah. And um, she would shuffle these and, and pull one, and then that would be her, her meditation. And each one had its own meaning. But anyway, um, when you place these in an envelope that is kind of um, ruined because I believe it came out of the fire. 
Um, but a little place each one inside the envelope is the uh, star post sign circle where then the wave, right? So we'll put that over here. Now, um, this is also a photo, photocopy, but um, she would carry it around a, um, a pencil and would draw shapes on it, uh, like, like the ones that she pulled out, out of the deck. And one day she actually stabbed the, uh, wait a minute, yeah, it's too bright, but she actually stabbed the um, card uh, with a pencil. And we're going to do a little experiment here. I'm going to take the card and place it inside the frame there. There it is. Maybe. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Go, go figure, right? Um, and um, I'm going to call on the spirit of Annabelle to help me out here um, and ask her to push down on the pencil for me. I'm not going to um, do everything. I'm just going to um, hold the pencil still and hopefully, oh, wait a minute. Look at that. Oh. Wow. It, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, and I'll see if I can pull this all the way through. Yeah, you guys can see the home. <gasps> yeah. But if I show you the other side of the window, actually, I did show you the other side of the window. Um, there's no hole. Um, there's no hole here. Uh, in fact, the whole the whole window is intact, um, but there is definitely a hole here. Um, on top of that, I I'm not sure, but I'm I'm thinking that something happened here. Uh, if I pull this out again. Uh, we have some, we have, oh, wait a minute. It was, it was going to say we have some wavy lines and, but we also have, okay, now this is, wow, this is crazy. I um, think she's here. Well, I, I wasn't well, sure if I, I, if, if I was going to read the answer to so, um, The last paragraph says, I drew an interesting card this morning out of my, my, my deck. I drew the waves. <gasps> Emotions, fluidity, and escape. Fitting, don't you think? Time for my escape from hell and to grab at my only chance of heaven. I will see you all again one day. I promise, Annabelle. Do it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, oops, I did that again last night. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so um, thank you, Isabel. I really appreciate your help. Thank and you so much. Oh my God. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you. It's really, 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 it's
Ben Huesenbaum, and now back to Kevin. <laughs> Tommy is moving into uh, into comedy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, so it's just down to me. If I can stop these glasses shining. On. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, that's better. Um, down to me to finish the show. And I'm going to bring in my favorite non magician member who's been with us since the almost since the dawn of Open Mic Magic. So, Jill, come and join me, please. Yay. Yay. Yeah, hey. Hello, Jill. Hello, Flora. Jill. Hi uh, there, Jill. Jill. Correct me if I'm wrong, you, you're good with numbers, aren't you? And things like that. Well, I can add one and one and make you seven. You can add one and one and make three, yeah, like, like I can. Uh, um, back in the day when when I was uh, knee-high to a grasshopper, um, I was always been in, in, in electronics and computing. And back in those days, to program computers when I was at college, uh, you used to write your program out longhand, and then you should used to go to the punch card machine and type your code in, and it would punch it out on these cards. Uh, and I've sort of decided to do a little bit of a magic trick. I'll just show you these here. These are all the playing cards in the deck, but they're on on sort of like punch cards. So, Jill, just go to that camera there. So there they all are. Uh, I can't remember the 9 or 10 or 11, something like that of those. Uh, Jill, in your head, I just want you to think of a playing card, any playing card in the deck, not the Jokers, because there are no Jokers on, on these. Yeah? But think of any playing card you like. Yep. Yeah? Tell me when yeah. you've got one in your head. I'd and then we're going to see if the uh, if the punch cards can actually divine your your playing card. Okay. So I'm going to hold them up one at a time, and if you see your card on that punch card, I'm going to put it over here. And if your card if you don't see it, I'll just discard it. Okay. So here we go. You've got that card in your mind. I have. Okay. Let's have a look at this one. There we are. Can you see all the, the cards on that? I can't see the red ones. The black ones are showing up better. No, they're not showing up very well. Uh, uh, let me just see what we can, if we can improve. You're watching on an iPad, aren't you? I am, yes. How's that? Does that improve it? Oh, that's better, yes. Yeah, okay. You've got your finger over a couple. There we go. So is your card on there? No. It's not. Okay, so uh, I will we just discard that one. Okay, next one. No. No. Uh, try and get, make sure I'm not over any cards that are showing. Yes. Hey, we got one. Try another one. Okay. <laughs> no. Definitely not on that. No. Nope. That one. Yes. It is on that one. Good, good, good. We have, we have a few hits. So we've had two. No. No, oh, good, Jill. Hopefully you'll have a yes. one of these. Yes, it's on there, it's on there. Three, good, good, good. And finally, one to go. No. Definitely not on that. No. Okay, so we'll just get rid of the ones, we'll get rid of the ones where, which you didn't have, okay? And we'll go to these ones over here. And... We will just ask for cards. Ooh. Let's say. Do you know what Jill's card is that she's thinking of? And they say it's a red card. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a fourth heart, isn't it, Jill? It is. Yeah. 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 
Excellent. Thank you. One more thing. One more thing. Okay, we'll just do one more little thing with you, Jill, before we let everybody go. Let's get rid of my... my uh... Jill, uh, I'll go to the overhead camera for this one, so you can see this nice and closely, and hopefully you can see everything that's going to happen. This, again, goes back to my, my youth, but even before the punch cards, this was way ago, I had a, I had a group of friends at school, and I used to call them our magical friends, and I'll explain why in a minute. But I'll just go through, tell you about them. There was a, uh, I've written a little card about each of my friends here, and a little thing about how, how I remember them. So there was, there was Catherine, Kath, and uh, I, I, I love playing cricket. She hated it. And whenever we went out to play cricket, she used to grab the ball and hide it. And then we used to chase her around like crazy, trying to find the, find the find the ball. Mayhem. So then there was Ian. Ian uh, was, uh, uh, I'm not, I won't say he was fat, but he liked to eat. He was a great eater. Uh, then, then there was Hans. Uh, Hans was from Germany, and he was great fun. And he used to, used to mess around a lot, and he was always falling over and cutting himself. So I remember as, as Hans cut his leg. Uh, Carl, Carl was such a gentle, nice guy, but he hated dogs. And uh, so, at any time that a dog came near, he would shoo it away or kick at it. Or, or so I remember as Carl hit the dog. Um, and we had Ivan. Uh, Ivan was the uh, was the ray, you know, the rogue of, of our little gang of people. He was he was the bad one. And, but he was, he was nice. He was really a nice gentle guy, but we used to call him uh, the bad boy. So I've remembered it as Ivan is the bad boy. Uh, Sue, so you've heard of Long Tall Sally? Well, this was Long Tall Sue. She was head and shoulders above all of us in school. And mm. uh, so we, I just remember as Sue very tall. <laughs> and then Paul, <laughs> Paul, as opposed to Paul in our group here, uh, this was my friend Paul from school. And he always used to have uh, everybody else's pens. He was never short of pens himself, but he used to nick everybody else. So I used to remember as Paul had my pens. Uh, and these were my magical friends. And the reason I remember them so clearly is the first letter of each of their name actually uh, tells you why we were so close. Okay. Because they were my psychic pals. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So, <laughs> We're going to see if we can uh, get them to help me, my magical friends, uh, find a card that you're going to choose randomly. Okay. Hi. And how we will do this is uh, firstly, we will uh, take out the jokers, was the jokers are nightmares. They always cause a problem in cards, uh, as other magicians will tell you. There we go. So there's the two jokers. We will get rid of them. And to make this completely fair, because shuffling cards on camera, I could do this and, you know, do this, etc. And I might be doing something really sneaky. So to make sure that this is really mixed up, I'm going to do what's called a wash, which is we just drop the cards on the table randomly like this, and then mix them up, take some, push them in the bottom, take from the top, push them to the bottom, take some and push them in all over the place. And Jill, you just tell me when to stop. That's and how hopefully that will mean that they're fully mixed. Are you happy with that? Did that look very random? Fine. That looks okay. wonderful. Okay. So. Now, Jill, do you want me to shuffle them as well, or are you happy with that? I'm happy with that. You're happy. I right. am. <laughs> Now, we're going to randomly find a card for you. And as I said, I have my magical friends here. So we're going to actually use magical friends as we're going to spell our magical friends. And whatever card is at that position is the card that you were going to have. But I'm not going to look at it, only you'll look at it. So I'll have to take my glasses off and try and show you in a second, if I can manage that. So uh, we're going to spell out. So you're sure I don't want to, I can cut these, mix them, shuffle them, do anything else. We're going no, down to the card that no, no, magical like friends spells to. Yeah. So M 
A G I C A L F R I E N D S. So there's your card, Jill. Ooh, okay. Thank you. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my glasses off, cover my eyes, and turn that card over for you to look at. Okay? okay. Tell me that you can see it. Hopefully you can. I can, yes. You can, and you just remember it. I can. Is that it? Got it. I'll turn it back. Oh. Why is the world blurry, Jill? Put ah. your glasses on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to bury your card in the pack. Okay, and Jill, I'm going to cut them now, and I'm going to keep cutting until you say stop. And to show that I'm cutting in different places, I'll offset each cut. Yeah, so I'll cut there, and then we'll cut there. And then we'll cut there. And tell me when to stop cutting. Stop. Yeah. So, your card could absolutely be anywhere in here. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you'll find it, you and your friends. Well, let's hope, let's hope our magical friends can help you find it. <laughs> so, it could be, could be there. Uh, could be absolutely anywhere, Joel. So, oh dear, now. I am having absolutely no luck here at all. So I am probably going to have to call on my uh, on my magical friends. When I've actually gone through, have have you actually seen your card? Is it here? I can't see them very well. It's very oh, right. simple. Okay. Yeah, I think I have. You have seen it, yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, now I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I can't find it. Okay, so uh, we're going to call on one of my magical friends and just see if they can help me. Uh, what was your card, Jill? By the way, the three of spades. The three of spades. The three of spades. Oh, no. Okay, we will try. Choose, choose one of my magical friends to try and help me. Uh, we can have Kath, Ivan, Hans, Carl, oh, Kath, Ian, Sue, Paul. Which one would you like? The one beginning with Y. Y, Ivan. Okay. Yeah. That's the okay, let's just see. So, Ivan. Ivan is a bad boy. Y V A N I S A. B A D B O Y. Ah, right. And the card that Ivan is a bad boy spelled to is the Three of Spades. Three of Spades. Wonderful. Wow. I was not yeah. convinced that that was going to work, Jill, but uh, thanks for your help. And we got there in the end. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And uh, right, so that's about it for tonight. I want to find my mouse so I can say goodbye to Facebook. Bye to everyone out there in Facebook land.